This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll take a look at creating MPEG-2 files. MPEG-2 allows you to create broadcast quality video files and was designed to support high resolution, high bitrate video. It is the video compression format used for high quality video titles on DVD, HD broadcast, and home satellite dish systems. All DVD players contain the hardware required for MPEG-2 playback. Two notes about MPEG-2. It does have support for interlaced video, even though all DVDs are progressive playback. There is no streaming support for MPEG-2, as it is not suitable for streaming video files over the web, because it requires a higher bitrate to maintain acceptable image quality. For the situations in which you are editing high definition sources in Final Cut Pro and you want to create a standard definition DVD from them, Compressor provides high quality down conversion. Compressor retains as much detail as possible during scaling and correctly preserves progressive or interlaced formats when encoding to MPEG-2 for DVD. When creating MPEG-2, there are three different stream types. The first stream type is elementary streams. These streams contain only MPEG-2 content and no audio. The next option is a transport stream. These streams contain several MPEG-2 content channels and their associated audio. All the channels are combined or multiplexed together, allowing the receiver to choose which to play back. Compressor only supports creating single channel transport streams. Transport streams can recover for interruptions during playback, making them suitable for broadcast applications. The third option is program streams. These streams contain only the MPEG-2 content channel and the associated audio. These program streams require an error-free delivery method and are primarily used for storage or processing within a computer. By default, Compressor creates elementary streams. Let's now create an MPEG-2 setting. In the settings menu from the dropdown, choose MPEG-2. Most of these options are set for automatic as you should probably leave them at their default settings. Unless you have specific needs for MPEG-2, using Compressor's built-in MPEG-2 settings is probably the best idea. But if you're adventurous, you can create three different stream usages. Generic, SD, DVD, and Blu-ray. Even though Blu-ray prefers the MPEG-4 layer 10 format, it can support MPEG-2 HD video. For now, we'll just stick with the SD DVD. And if we uncheck all the automatic settings, we can see we have a couple different video formats, frame rates, aspect ratios, and field dominance. Most of the time, you'll want to keep these set to automatic, and your source video will determine the best output. For now, I'll uncheck these, as when we get into later tabs, we must have these unchecked in order for options to be uncovered in these tabs. And lastly, we can choose to start at a specific time code. Otherwise, the MPEG-2 stream will maintain the timecode in the original video. Also note the extension is M2V for elementary streams. If you create a program stream, the extension will be MPEG. If you choose video format NTSC, the normal dimensions for NTSC video are 720 by 486. However, MPEG-2 requires a frame size of 720 by 480. Unless you have already specified cropping attributes for your setting, Compressor will crop the two rows of pixels from the top and the four rows of pixels from the bottom. This crop attribute is only temporary and not saved in your settings. You can see the effects by opening the preview window or by double clicking your settings in the job. In the quality tab, we can adjust the encoding for the video stream. At the bottom of the quality tab, we have an estimation of how much video can be stored on a single layer DVD. This estimation assumes you are using a single AIFF audio stream to be used with your MPEG-2 video stream. We have five different modes to choose from. The first option is one pass CBR, or constant bitrate encoding. This option will encode your video at whatever your average bitrate is set. This is the fastest compressor MPEG-2 encoding mode, and it provides pretty good quality, between five and nine megabits per second. The next option is one pass VBR. One pass VBR aims to maintain consistent quality at the expense of constant bitrate for the transcoded video file. 
This means that in scenes with much detail or fast motion, compressor allows a higher bit rate than it allows in less detailed or still parts of a stream. For standard definition media files, a bit rate of 3.5 megabits and above, this mode provides good to excellent quality and transcodes fairly quickly. Our next option is OnePass VBR Best. Though similar to OnePass VBR, Compressor applies greater effort to its internal decision making process. This can give outstanding video quality at bit rates of 3 to 3.5 megabits and above. This will provide higher quality, especially for difficult material at low bit rates. However, it does take slightly longer. The next option is 2 pass VBR. In this mode, Compressor reads through the entire source video file twice. The first of the pass, Compressor analyzes the entire source video stream prior to transcoding, and it determines the encoding difficulty of each scene. It then creates a bit rate allocation plan that gives the higher bit rate to complex scenes and a lower bit rate to easy scenes. By doing this, it will average out the specified bit rate while ensuring the specified maximum bit rate is not exceeded. During the second pass, Compressor actually does the compression. The result of this process is that transcoding time is almost twice that of 1-pass VBR, although the benefit is not twice the quality. 2-pass VBR provides more consistent overall quality than 1-pass VBR, especially in source media files where the difference between the most and least complex scene is substantial. Our last option is 2-pass VBR Best. Similar to the 2-pass VBR, again, this mode devotes more effort to the internal decision-making process. It provides the best possible quality that compressor has to offer. Our last option at the bottom is motion estimation and has three different options. The motion estimation is another trade-off between image quality and processing time. The good option is the fastest option and in general you should use good when using the one pass encoding mode. The better option works well for almost all types of interlaced video sources, even shaky footage from handheld consumer camcorders. In general, if you're going to be using a VBR mode, especially progressive video format, you should use the better mode. And finally, best. You should use best when using a best mode for video encoding. The next tab is GOP. GOP stands for Group of Pictures. We won't go in-depth in GOP theory. On the surface, GOP is the types of frames used in a GOP pattern. For instance, in a GOP size of 15, we have 15 frames that mix between I, B, and P frames. An I frame is sometimes called a key frame. When we are compressing video, the I frame is always a full frame of video. And then we have P frames or predictive key frames. The P frame refers back to the I frame and has decent compression. The B frames, however, are the difference between the I and the P frames. For instance, if we have a guy standing against a wall talking, only his mouth is moving during the course of the GOP size or the GOP pattern. Therefore, the B frames is just the movement of the mouth. The I and the P frames are referred to for the background and the rest of the man. For most MPEG-2 encoding situations intended for use on a DVD, choose the default IB BP as the GOP structure setting. For NTSC video, the GOP size is 15. For PAL, it's 12. We do have the option for IP structure. Notice the change in the pattern at the bottom. And IBP. Again, the default and the preferred method is IBBP. When using IBBP, we have two options, open and closed structure. When we use a closed structure, every pattern begins with an iframe. And the B frames can only refer to that iframe for the pattern. However, in open, the B frames can refer to I frames in other GOP patterns, including before and after. Keep in mind when you are creating chapter markers, they must land on an I frame. If you try to set a chapter marker on a B or P frame, Compressor or DVD Studio Pro will adjust the chapter marker accordingly. The next option is the Extras tab. When creating MPEG-2 streams to be used in DVD Studio Pro 2 or above, you may want to check this option as it will speed up the process for DVD Studio Pro. However, if you plan to author in another application, you will want to turn this off as your MPEG streams may not function properly in other authoring applications. You also have an option to only include chapter markers. This will strip out other type of markers 
from your final MPEG-2 stream. The last two options are only available when using stream usage of generic. Because the generic option is not intended for DVD use, it will allow you to do YUV422 encoding. Otherwise, it uses the default 420 encoding. Also, if your stream usage is set for SD, DVD, or Blu-ray, and you check the multiplex option, it immediately switches to generic and uses the MT2 transport stream or MPEG for program stream. Again, you should only modify your MPEG-2 settings if you have specific needs for MPEG-2. Otherwise, use the settings and do a search for DVD and use the built-in MPEG-2 for DVD options built into Compressor 4.